friends, welcome back to the channel. Popping out to Bader's real quick this beautiful snowy morning and I am grabbing some more bearings. I'll explain when I get to the shop. I was gonna explain last night when I left the shop, but uh, it was very, very late and I don't like to talk when I'm cranky because I'm cranky and I don't like to talk when I'm cranky. So yesterday we went ahead and knocked out all of the bearing clearances and one of the rod bearing clearances was quite a bit tighter than I would like. So we got 0015, number two was 0010, which is too tight, three is 0013, four is 0015. So I need to get two and three a little bit opened up. So Bader had some extra clear, their standard size with the thousands extra oil clearance. So with these guys, we can mix and match with the non-extra clearance bearings and we should be able to get everything in that 0015 ballpark. That is my goal. Would the motor run as is? Probably, it probably last. It probably lasts a very, very long time, but uh, I'd always have it in the back of my mind. So this is something that uh, has to be done for a nice longevity, reliable, bulletproof engine. I'm gonna go ahead and get this knocked out real quick and we are going to today completely assemble our EJ25 for the STI. Thirty minutes later of adjusting bearings around, and these are our final rod bearing clearance numbers: 0016 through 0017. Very, very pleased with that. Much better than what we had last night, which is a. Uh, 0010 through 0015. I like that. Okay, we're good to go. Let's build this thing. Everything's gotta be recleaned real quick and then we can move on to assembly. So I'm gonna clean up the case halves, the crank, pistons are untouched, and then clean up the rods as well. We have the bearings back out of the case halves. The best way I found to clean stuff, I have a garbage can with an oven rack. I'm gonna set the case half on the oven rack and then brake clean, blow it off the compressed air, we'll be good to go. Everything is now cleaned up. We need to go ahead and bolt the rods onto the crank. You can see we have them numbered one through four. So we got one, two, three, and four. The assembly lube of choice is some of this good stuff from the local auto parts store. So the most important thing when installing bearings, and I know I've said this on the channel a thousand times before, I'll reiterate it again. Bearing tang on the rod has to go to the bearing tang on the cap. So if you take your cap over here, you see the tang there? Those have to bolt together like that. If you mix them up, you might as well uh, throw your engine in the ocean. Also, I don't know if it matters on aftermarket rods, I really don't think it does, but all of my bearing tanks with the rod one being over here, all the bearing tanks are gonna be facing down. I don't think it matters on aftermarket rods. I know OEM Subaru, it does state that in the manual. That's just what I like to follow. Our crank is fully assembled with the manly rods and ARP bolts. 42 foot pounds is the torque spec, utilizing the ARP fastener lube. If you ever wanna to know torque specs for ARP hardware, go on their site, they list it all there. 
This guy is ready to go into the case half. So we're gonna take this case over here. We're gonna set it down on our table, get those bearings installed into the case, apply the lube. We're gonna go ahead and drop this down onto the case. Two of the rods are gonna go into the cylinder walls. I know this is weird if you're an Evo guy, it's very confusing. And then the other case half goes on top of that with sealant in the middle. Crank and rods are installed. One and three are in those cylinder walls. Two and four stick up. And if you use the assembly lube, it's a little bit more sticky than just regular engine oil. So I'd highly recommend it because you can kind of stick the rods straight up. All right, we got a few O-rings to get installed, some sealant, and then the other case half can go on. And then we'll pretty much have a nice little short block here. We went ahead and got the four little o-ring seals installed. Let's go ahead and get this case half cleaned off where all this gasket sealer goes. We also have to do a little bit up in here. So get all that cleaned off on both case halves. And I'm actually gonna be applying the sealant to this case half just because there's no rods or there's no nothing in the way on this guy over here. So let's get them both cleaned up. I've been rocking with some actual three bond these days and I've been liking it. So this is the sealant of choice. We have the case halves together. Everything's sealed up. We need to go ahead and install all of our hardware. I would highly recommend replacing these little ceiling washers right here. So we got some new ones chilling down there. All these bolts are gonna get a touch of some engine oil, just a little bit, make them thread in nice and easy. Pork spec on those things is weird. It's like a three or four step process and it's not very enjoyable. So I'll throw a photo on the screen of the torque spec. That'd be much easier than explaining. Let's go ahead and get these cases torqued down and we can move on to some piston stuff. Okay, we are ready to move on to the pistons. So we have to get the rings onto the pistons, get the pistons dropped down in here, fit the wrist pin and circle clip, and we will have a complete short block. These are Manly's, which are marked. It says front, this is front, so they face this way. So thankfully we already got the ring end gap set yesterday. We went 
O2 on top, O2 three bottom. Rings are on, I'll have the orientation on the screen. We have the back stir clip in. This guy is ready to be dropped down into the cylinder. I have, thankfully, a very nice Company 23 ring compressor here that we're gonna be using. So let's grab some WD-40 and lube up the cylinder walls. So this is the kind of tricky part. You see our piston is installed, front facing front. Now we have to reach in here, line up the rod where the wrist pin goes through so we can get the wrist pin in through this hole. Now we have to slide the piston all the way down. So we're gonna tap it down like so until it's all lined up. That looks pretty good there. Let's grab our wrist pin, get a little assembly lube on her and we can slide her through the piston and the rod. And then we'll have to reach in with some long needle nose pliers and get the other stir clip on. A little bit different if you're used to like an inline four, but they're really not all that bad. We have all the pistons in. We need to go ahead and get this cover on, that cap, this back cover, and then there's two of these caps that go on the front as well. We gotta get all of those installed, and then I can go ahead and get this thing on the engine stand, and we can move on to the cylinder heads. I can't do the oil pickup or baffle or pan yet. I do not have, for some reason, the O-rings the for the oil pickup tube, so we'll have to grab those tomorrow, but that's not a big deal. So we got her up on the engine stand. Let's go ahead and pop on our heads real quick. So I need to pull off cam caps. Cams are gonna come back out. Head is fully rebuilt, new everything. So we should be good there. Clean up the gasket surface, get the head sitting on the block and go ahead and get our ARP studs in. So the head is on, studs are in, studs just go hand tight into the block. ARP lube is on the nuts and the threads. Now we're gonna go ahead and torque them down in this torque sequence here, 30, 
60 and then 90 foot pounds. Right, we got everything on. Cam cap torque specs are seven foot pounds on the outer and then the inner thicker ones, which are a mole thread, it is 14 foot pounds. Here we have a pretty much complete long block. You still have valve covers and some timing stuff and whatnot, but all the hard stuff is done. All the time consuming stuff is all finished up. Before we do anything else, I guess we could do valve covers tonight, but I do need to grab some seals for the oil pump. And for the oil pickup, I completely spaced ordering those. So as soon as we get those in tomorrow, we can get this whole entire thing 100% finished up, ready to bolt on. That did make sense, ready to drop in the car. I hope this video helped you out. If it didn't help you out, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Every part that we installed on this engine, all of the aftermarket stuff, rods, pistons, studs, all that good stuff, bearings, I'll have linked down in the description box below. I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow.